It's time to pray. It's time to pray. Let's make sure the help meets are coming together in prayer. I'm smiling and laughing because I am. I apologize. I'm a few minutes late. But one thing I know, I am loved because my inbox was full in these last few minutes. Like, are you okay? Good morning. It's time to pray. Mom, what's going on? I appreciate you all. I appreciate you all. That means we are used to coming together. That means you all are not playing. That means the help beats are on their assignments. And I apologize. I apologize, but it made me smile. It made me smile. Let me just say, you all know I'm transparent. It was one snooze. One snooze. <laughs> one snooze with the... Wait. And I missed it. One snooze and we are off our schedule. We got to be honest. We got to know what's going on. We have to get it together. It's important. Just just to let you know, one snooze could cause people to feel like, what, what is happening? What are you one snooze away from? Mm -mm -mm. Missing. Causing other people to worry. You know? Mm. Yes, everybody's going to search. But that just means you all are ready to pray. That means I'm doing my job, so I got to stop snoozing. So thank you, thank you, thank you for so many who join in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. On replay, I'm Yvette Benton of Gerald and Yvette Ministries. And we are the help meets that are suitable. And when help meets are suitable, they know how to pray for their king, future kings, young kings. They know how to pray. They've got to be able to, to pray until they see it. And when they see it, they're going to protect it. That's our motto for help me prayer. Pray until you see it. And when you see it, you got to protect it. So that's what help me prayer is all about. So on Tuesdays, we come together because you should be praying for your king. You should be covering your king. You should be making sure you are, are tapping in to whatever Holy Spirit is saying. Okay, this is what he needs today. Some things you already know. Some things are going to be based on generational curses. Some prayers are going to be based on things that you've seen in the past. Some things are going to be based on things that you see with your natural eye. But even more importantly, because a help me is an intercessor. Come on. If nothing else, you are your king's personal intercessor. So this is what needs to happen. As a help me, you've got to tap into Holy Spirit. As a help me, you have to be willing to put yourself in the gap. As a help me, you've got to be willing to cover the king concerning things that maybe you've never seen. Maybe you don't even know anything about. One thing that God had to tell me is, Yvette, you don't know how hard it is to be a king. Even if you think Gerald is not doing a good job at it, you still don't know the pressure that are on kings, especially if they're not doing a good job. They know they're not doing a good job. It's, it's so important for, for warfare prayers. I was praying certain types of prayers and I still pray prayers of thanksgiving. I still pray prayers of intercession. There's, I still make sure I worship. There's lots and lots and lots of things that we make sure that we pray about. But one thing I was not doing enough of is extending and understanding my authority in prayer. And that's where one, where God was like, I need you to war. There's a war going on for your king. Satan is pulling your king toward him. I need you to help me to pull him toward me. Mm, I need someone to catch that. Satan is pulling your king toward him. God says, not only are two thirds of the angels on your side, but I'm on your side. But I need you not to help the enemy. I need you to help me. I need you to be on my side. I need you to pull. I need you to encourage. I need you to pray. I need you to intercede. I need you to make sure he knows someone is loving him. Someone is covering him. Someone is praying for him. And even at, though at the time that I got the revelation, I wasn't even in contact with him. It didn't matter. God says your prayers matter. God said you have authority and power to tread on serpents. You have authority and power to cast down imaginations. You have authority and power to pull down strongholds. I just need you to understand your authority. I need you to understand your power. I need you to understand who I said you are in your role as a help me. So as a help me, when he was, when Holy Spirit was teaching me, help me, he said, help me. Yvette, 
Use your authority. If you don't see what you want to see, pray it until you see it. If his behavior is different than what's lined up in my word, declare over him. Just use your authority. Understand your authority. Exercise your authority. Make sure your weapons are not only sharpened, but you understand how to use them skillfully. So authoritative worship and authoritative prayers, authoritative declarations do matter. I, I, I must say that again. Authoritative prayers, authoritative worship, authoritative intercession matters because there's a war going on. And some of us, I can't say for everyone, but some of us know we're in a battle. Some of us know we're fighting. Some of us know our kings are, are, are going through something. Some of us have a knowing in our spirit, even before you're married, that God needs to teach you how to war in the spirit because the person that, that, that God's going to send to find you, may need you to understand spiritual warfare, may need you to understand your weapons, may need you to understand your authority because of his call. Most of the time, it's the high calling. It's the chosen who get attacked the most. Can somebody pr please put their, put, put their emotions aside and hear what I'm saying? Because there's a reason God wants me to teach today. Sometimes because of the authority and the call of a king, in my case, because of my king's call, because of my king's voice, because of my king's territorial authority, because of my king's apostolic anointing, he was attacked. His bloodline was attacked. His behavior was attacked. His character was attacked. And since I was so busy operating in my emotions, I wasn't understanding who he was. And so God had to teach me, you need to first know who he is. And in order to do that, you've got to get past your emotions. You've got to get your, he get your own healing. You've got to get your own deliverance. And when you have your deliverance, you'll hear my voice. You'll hear me say, you have to heal in order to hear. And because I, I chose to heal, because I chose to understand deliverance, because I chose to let go of my own, uh, what I thought was my right to be angry was my I thought it was my right to be frustrated I thought it was my right to become the angry and 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 um almost basically unforgiving I have never had a right to be unforgiving because I'm a child of God I knew God said I needed to forgive. I knew God said I needed to let go of the anger. I knew the word of God said I needed to forgive 70 times 7, but I thought it stopped with my husband, but it does not. Help me. It does not stop. God is not changing his mind. God is not doing something different. We've got to heal so we can hear. And then when Holy Spirit started started telling me some of the, the struggles my king was going through, I started having a different kind of compassion. And when my compassion changed, and when I understood my authority, and when I stopped being so frustrated that I started being compassionate and my emotions were pushed out of the way, then I said, wait a minute. The devil in hell is not going to come after my king. The devil in hell is not going to hinder my destiny. The devil in hell is not going to hinder my marriage. The devil in hell has to get out of my household. The devil in hell has been given an eviction notice and I'm the one serving it. How about that in the name of Jesus? God said you got to be a warrior. Because of the situation you're in, you've got to be a warrior. Because of the situation you're in, you've got to fight. You've got to learn how to fight. You've got to learn how to fight with faith. You've got to learn how to fight in the spirit. Oh, I knew how to fight him. <laughs> how about that? He said, instead of fighting him, you fight the enemy. What you're seeing is not him. What you're seeing is the enemy working through him. Get past it. Get past it. See past it. Get, get to the spirit realm and understand what you're looking at. That's the enemy. That's the enemy being cunning. That's the enemy being crafty. That's the enemy uh, uh, understanding that the enemy's uh, uh, MO is to steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to kill your marriage. He's trying to steal your destiny. He's trying to destroy you. He's trying to destroy your family. What are you going to do about it, help me? So I had to learn how to rise up. I had to learn that there was an inner warrior on the inside of me. I had to learn why God gave me weapons of warfare. He said the weapons of your warfare, they're not carnal. So stop thinking carnally, bet. Stop thinking carnally, help me. The weapons of your warfare, they're not carnal. What they are are mighty 
They can't be mighty if you're not using them. They can't be mighty if you don't know what they are. They cannot be mighty if you don't take take that sword and put it in your hand. A, a, a weapon is not mighty until you know how to use it. A weapon is not mighty until you become skillful. A weapon is not mighty until you even know you have one. So your weapons could be carnal, and that could be the reason. Your weapons can be set aside and that could be the reason you're struggling that could be the reason you're missing some things so i'm i'm here today and every every time we come together in prayer every time i, I work with my mentees every time i work with those that i counsel every time i work with those that 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 are called to my voice when i do help me tips my book everything that i do is to pour out what god poured into me i don't just come on here to come on here for no reason i'm gonna pray Oh, I'm going to pray for my king. But God said, no, you have to be an example because some people don't understand you. Some people don't understand what you're saying by, I had to pray. I had to war on behalf of my husband. I had to war on behalf of him. I have to cover him. You cover him even if you're in a great relationship, even if in you're in, in a great marriage because it's tough being a king. I'm not saying it's not tough being a help me, but I still have to have compassion about what the king is going through. So this morning, we're going to use our authority because guess what? Here's another assignment. How about being a king during coronavirus, during a pandemic? He's never been a king in that situation. Just like you've never been a help meet in that situation. If someone's saying, well, who's going to pray for you? You know what? You let God do what God's going to do. Today's assignment is to cover the king. See, a lot of times we're so busy wondering what's going to happen, who's going to take care of us, what about me, what about me? We're going to bind the selfish spirit of the help meet because we have to understand order. If God placed the king as the head, if God placed the king as the head, we're going to protect the head. We're going to do what God said to do about the head and we let God's order come into pass. See, some of us don't understand order because instantly I felt in my spirit a lot of people saying, well, well, what about me? Exactly. You talk to God about that. What about you? We can pray for you. You can pray for yourself. But today our assignment is to cover the king. If you forget to do that, if you're so selfish, all you do is pray what you want. Then you're praying amiss because you're missing, you're missing God's order. You're missing what his, and God is governmental. The word of God is authoritative. The word of God is, is apostolic. God is apostolic and he understands and, and uses governmental order. So we're going to pray for the king. I'm going to pray for future kings. We're going to pray for our young kings. Take some time out of your schedule. Take some time out from trying to get the things from God that you want. And lend yourself as an intercessor, help me. Lend yourself to Holy Spirit. Lend yourself to God to speak things into the atmosphere to make sure. To speak things into the atmosphere that's on the heart of God. That's in the order of God. That's, that's, that's void of your own desires, void of your own needs. That's void of, of what you want. Say, God, what do you want me to pray? God, what does my king need? God, what do you want me to decree? What do you want me to declare? I'm a vessel. I want to be used. A help me that is suitable lends herself to God and says, use me, God. What do you need me to say? What do you need me to decree? What do you need me to declare? Because my priest, prophet, and king needs to be covered. My priest, prophet, and king needs to hear your voice. My priest, prophet, and king needs everything that you have for him. So let's do that. Let's do what we need to do to cover the kings. Let's make sure we say it and pray it until we see it. And when we see it, we protect it. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're doing, help me. That's what help meet prayer is all about, making sure we exercise our authority, making sure we cover the kings, and making sure we lend ourselves as vessels that can be used by Holy Spirit. Mm, that's good. That's good to me. That's a good reminder for me. It's not easy to be a help meet suitable, but we need a reminder. We need reminders, and that's why we come together in, in, in oneness. 
because one to put a thousand to flight, two ten thousand. Thank you for letting other help meets know. Thank you for tagging other help meets. Thank you for for making sure you let other people know. Let's come together and cover the kings. If the kings are covered, certain things will happen just because the kings are in place. Oh, that's another teaching. I'll make sure I do that at another time. Well, let's get to praying. Let's get to praying because our kings are going to need us. Because in the next few weeks, depending on when you're watching this, but if you're watching this in, in real time, if you're watching this right now, if you're watching this when I am broadcasting, we are going through something we have never gone through before in our lifetime, most of us. In our lifetime. Unless you're from another country that has ha dealt with something like this, in our lifetime, some things are changing. Some things are happening. And the kings have to be covered so decisions can be made wisely. So, so nothing can come against them so they can make the right choices for their family. They can make the right choices for their life. They can make the right choices for where they're going, what they're doing, and what they're destined to do. So let's cover them. So first, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we cover ourselves under the blood of Jesus and decree and declare that nothing shall in any way harm or hurt us. Father, forgive us for our sins and anything we've said, anything we've done, anything we've even thought wrong that will cause our hearts to be hardened, that will cause us to be out of order, that will cause us to, to be out, outside of your will. God, we want to place ourselves on the inside of your will, creating us a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. Sanctify us, God, in your word. I thank you, Lord God, that my heart is clean, that all help meets hearts are clean and clear in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that we are trusting in you with our whole heart and we're leaning not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, we're acknowledging you and you are directing our path. Father, we need our king's path to be directed. We need our paths to be directed as help meets so we can do what you have called forth for us to do so we can set ourselves lined up to protect the king's to protect the, the, the king's mindset in the name of Jesus. We say right now in the name of Jesus that the blood of Jesus covers the kings, covers the priests, prophet, and kings, covers our PPKs in the name of Jesus, and nothing shall in any way harm or hurt them. Nothing shall in any way sway them to be outside of your will. We're decreeing and declaring that even in the midst of, of confusion, even in the midst of, of, of trying times, even in the midst of possible illness, I thank you, Lord God, that you are raising up kings that are strong. You are raising up kings that understand how to make good choices. You are raising up kings that resist the enemy in the name of Jesus. We say right now that our kings resist the enemy and he is fleeing in Jesus' name. He is fleeing right now in the name of Jesus. He no longer is being hindered by the enemy in Jesus' name. He no longer is being hindered by any kind of epidemic, any kind of sickness, any kind of disease, any kind of influenza. In <laughs> In the name of Jesus, coronavirus will not come near our king in the name of Jesus. Coronavirus, you have no authority in Jesus' name. We are stopping you in the name of Jesus. We are saying it's like spiritual vitamin C is covering every king, is covering every family, is covering every individual in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that the blood of Jesus is beyond every virus in the name of Jesus. It's stronger than every virus. So we plead the blood of Jesus over every priest, prophet, and king over every young king in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that even in the midst of this, we bind the spirit of fear and we thank you, Lord God, that we can have authority over, over fear right now in Jesus' name. We're decreeing that they have power. We're decreeing that they have love. We're decreeing that they have a sound mind in the name of Jesus and nothing's going to cause them to be hindered. Nothing's going to cause them to lose faith. Nothing's going to cause them to back up in the name of Jesus. I speak right now to every priest, prophet, and king and I say your voice has power in Jesus name. Your voice has authority in Jesus name. We're lifting you up kings in Jesus name. We thank you Lord God that we have the authority to say right now in Jesus name the king's minds are clear to be able to walk through this, this, this pandemic in the name of Jesus without fear, without hindrance in Jesus name. That they, they are no longer worried. I bind the spirit of anxiety that may come after the king during this time. That may come after the king because of depression. That may come 
come after the king because of ideas. They may come after the king because they don't know if they have enough supplies. They may come after the king because they may be laid off on their job. They may be their job may be considering layoffs. Their job may be considering firing people. Their job may be considering lowing hours in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that they are able to take care of their families. They are able to make good choices. They are able to operate in, in as a king. In the name of Jesus, their kingly behavior stays strong in the name of Jesus, that they are around other people. They are around other kings. We send each priest, prophet, and king to be around and surrounded by other priests, prophet, and kings. We speak that the door is open for them to be around other priests, prophet, and kings, for them to pray for one another, for them not to be fearful of letting out their, their emotions, for them not to be fearful of letting out what's bothering them, for them not to be fearful of being able to get some deliverance in the name of Jesus. We speak deliverance over every priest, prophet, and king in Jesus' name. We lend ourselves, God, to you. We say right now in the name of Jesus, we have the sword of the spirit and we're shutting down a, a, a assignments of the enemy that may cause them to be confused in this, in this time in the name of Jesus. You are not confused, king. You hear the voice of God. And if you've never heard the voice of God, you hear the voice of God right now in the name of Jesus. We're binding up sin and saying sin, you no longer have an entryway into the king's heart, into the king's mind, into the king's choices in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that we can speak a spiritual strength over them, a supernatural strength over my king, a supernatural strength over every king in the name of Jesus. They are experiencing the presence of God right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that I can hear the Holy Spirit saying, speak a worship over your king. Speak a supernatural a, a, a desire to worship. In the name of Jesus, right now in Jesus' name, every priest, prophet, and king is now able in the name of Jesus, to worship like he's never worshiped before, to bow down before the Lord. And at the, at the, at the feet of Jesus is the answer. At the feet of Jesus is the answer to what's going on with their family. It's the answer to keep themselves safe. It's the answer to be able to know how to get through this pandemic in the name of Jesus. It's the answer to be able to, to make it through, through difficult times and finances, through confusion, in the stock market, in the name of Jesus, we speak a worship, a desire to worship, an ability to worship, and a, a choice to worship in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that every priest, prophet, and king has a worship in his mouth, has a worship in his heart, that he is able to do what God has asked him to do in the name of Jesus. So help me right now in Jesus' name. You speak a worship over them in Jesus' name. You thank you, you, you say, thank you, Lord God, that my king is worshiping. Thank you, Lord God, that he has a desire to worship. Thank you, Lord God, that he gets to the feet of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that he understands how to continually worship until he hears the voice of God, how to continually worship until he understands what God is speaking to him, understands what God is saying to him, understands what God is doing in this hour in the name of Jesus, that he gets the answers that he needs in the name of Jesus, that he gets the, the relief that he needs. We speak of relief over the hearts and the minds of every priest, prophet, and king and say anxiety, you back up in the name of Jesus. They are anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication, make their requests known to God. They are making their requests known to God while they're worshiping in the name of Jesus. That's what's going to relieve the anxiety. That's what's going to relieve the fear. That's what's going to relieve the, the, the feeling like he doesn't have the answer in the name of Jesus. I thank you that our kings worship. I thank you that our kings pray. I thank you that our kings pray in the name of Jesus. They are covered in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that even as the help meets worship, the kings are worshiping. And in worship, Lord God, in bowing down, worship is so much more than just music. Worship is even more than song. Worship is the ability to bow down before the Lord, the ability to prostrate themselves in the name of Jesus. I say right now that our kings are able to worship God in spirit and in truth. They give themselves to, to the Lord in Jesus' name. They humble themselves under the mighty hand of God in Jesus' name. And as they humble themselves in the name of Jesus, the mighty hand of God is leading them. The mighty hand of God is hovering over them. The mighty hand of God is telling them to go to where they need to go, that they get the wisdom, that they get the understanding, that they get the revelation that they need in Jesus' name. We speak revelation 
over every priest, prophet, and king, a revelation for your family, a revelation for what you're going through, a revelation to get past any kind of issues that you've had in the past, a revelation to come out of the confusion, a revelation to come out of sin, a revelation that to, that makes you understand that God has forgiven you, that, that he has forgiven you as far as the east is from the west. Just open your mouth, king. Open your mouth and worship. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and ask for forgiveness. Open your mouth and say, I don't want to sin anymore. Open your mouth and hear what, what, what God is telling you to say out of your mouth as the priest, prophet, and king of your home in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that it is their portion, that we can bind every assignment of the enemy that's stopping them from worshiping. We can crush every assignment of the enemy that's stopping them from being humble in the name of Jesus. We shut down pride that stops them from from worshiping in Jesus' name. We throw Holy Ghost bombs on every distraction that's keeping them from worshiping, every distraction that's causing them to work too much, that's causing them to sin or be with another individual that's outside of the will of God in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that we can use our authority to tread on serpents, to stomp down serpents, to crush every serpent and scorpion. Everything is under our feet in the name of Jesus. It's under our feet, help meets. We crush every assignment of the enemy that that may come against his ability to worship, may come against his ability to get the answers that they need as the head of the household. We speak the head of the household over them, but they will not be stressed out because they're the head. I cancel everything like arrested development or spiritual immaturity that may cause them not to understand how to worship, that may cause them not to understand how to lead in the name of Jesus. Pride in the name of Jesus. We're coming after you. Pride causes a person not to want to worship. Pride causes a person not to want to bow down. Down. Pride causes a person not to be humble in the name of Jesus. So pride, you cannot have our kings in Jesus name. You cannot have our kings pride in the name of Jesus. Pride, step aside in Jesus name. Pride, get behind us in the name of Jesus. We speak to you pride and say you will flee. You will not hinder their minds. You will not hinder their choices. You will not hinder their, their thought patterns in the name of Jesus. We got a sword in our hand. So we slice the, 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 the connection to pride pride in Jesus name. Every spiritual, every ungodly spiritual connection to pride. We say right now that we can sever it with our double-edged sword. It's in our hand because we have on the whole armor of God and we place the shield of faith. We use our shield of faith help me to bring it up, to cover the king as he is prostrate. Mm, baba, shit it is. Do you see that vision? Mm, my God. Do you see this vision in the name of Jesus? I just saw a vision of a help me holding up her shield of faith, holding up her shield of faith while her king lays prostrate before the Lord, while her king is on his knees worshiping. Hold up your shield to protect him from fiery darts of the enemy. Hold up your shield to protect him as he, as he worships God. Hold up your shield as he gives himself to the Lord. Hold up your shield. Protect him with your sword. Door. Cover him in the name of Jesus. Cover him while he worships. Cover him while he bows down. Cover him while he lays, lays pride aside. Cover him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Look at the shield in Jesus name. When you don't have faith, when you're not using your shield, your king may need covering in the name of Jesus. Cover him while he worships. Worships. Cover him while he bows down in the name of Jesus. Maybe he hasn't bowed down because your shield is not up, because your shield is not being used properly, because your sword is not being used properly. Use your entire whole armor of God in the name of Jesus. Have on your helmet of salvation. Get your mind right. Help me in Jesus' name. You got a breastplate of righteousness. Your, your, your feet are charred with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You are a warrior in the name of Jesus. Your loins are girded about with truth. God is your rear guard. We can protect the kings. We can cover the kings. We're going to pray it until we see it. When, when we see it, we got to protect it. If you see them bowing down, if you see them needing, needing the Lord, if you see them having too much pride, cancel it. Strike it down. Put a Holy Ghost bomb on it. you got authority. You can worship. You worship on his behalf. You worship until he bows down with you. You worship and be an example in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for men who are worshiping. We thank you, Lord God, for men who are lying, laying down their pride. We thank you, Lord God, that it's not going to be used against them, that they're not going to feel like they're weak because they're worshiping, that they're not going to feel like they're weak because they're bowing down before the Lord. They will not feel like they're weak because they're letting down that, 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 that selfishness in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God. That men understand they are strongest when they humble themselves. They are strongest when they bow down before God. They are strongest when they let God lead them in Jesus' name. Any and any obstacle that's standing in the way of them being able to worship God, being able to humble themselves. It's the ability to humble. It's the ability to know when I humble myself, I'm not being weak. I'm actually getting strength from God in the name of Jesus. Use your weapons, help me. Use your weapons to help them. They may not know how to worship. They may never have bowed down before the Lord. And it doesn't even mean they physically have to bow down. They have to give themselves away. I speak of ability to give themselves to the almighty God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I thank and praise you, Lord God, even for the visual. That the kings are in need. Encourage them. Pray for them. Cover them. In the name of Jesus. Be an example. I thank you. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that kings all over the world are going to God for the answer. They're going all over the world to get their, their spiritual strength. All over the world, they're kneeling down before the Lord. They're humble themselves. Uh, they're humbling themselves under God's mighty hand. They're letting go of their inappropriate pride in the name of Jesus. They're letting go of a spirit of pride, generational curses of pride. We sever you now in the name of Jesus. We say no longer longer will you hinder our priest, prophet, and king. You cannot touch our kings in the name of Jesus. They're bowing down before the Lord. We're decreeing it. We're believing it. If they've never bowed down before, well, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna stop them from bowing down right now in the name of Jesus. God, the kings, give them strength when they bow down. Give them answers while they bow down. Give, give them knowledge when they bow down. Give them everything that they need. Give them the answers for their family. Give them the strength to keep on going. Give them the strength to support their families. Give them the financial uh, uh, revelation. Give them witty ideas. Give them inventions in Jesus' name. Give them insight. Robo Spiritual insight. Their next move is at the feet of Jesus. The next move, in the name of Jesus, the strength to stay, the strength to listen to God, the strength to get past confusion, the strength to get past sin and bad choices, the strength to be integral in Jacarita Bashata, the strength to do the will of the Father in Jesus' name, the strength to ca to cancel generational uh, uh, curses in the name of Jesus, the strength to just stay in the, the, the protection of God. Mm. Bow down. Worship. Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. They get the truth while they're worshiping. I see it. All over this world, we're speaking to every priest, prophet, and king. I thank you, Lord God, that when 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 women of God, when help meets, tap into what Holy Spirit is deciding and needing us to tap into and move our emotions aside. We can get the answers. I thank you, God, that you want them to worship you. That there is a need for the spirit of worship. To worship God during confusion. To worship God when we don't know the answers. To worship God. And as they worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, we need the truth of what is happening. We need them to understand the truth of what is happening. Their loins are girded about with truth. We are covered and protected 
The answer is at the feet of Jesus. The answer is in the worship. Mama Kaya. The answer is in his worship. So speak a worship, help me. I speak a desire to worship. A desire to, to lay prostrate. A desire to hear and understand exactly what God is giving. They kashunda the answers that God is giving. And then when they hear the answer, I thank you for the spiritual strength to follow the truth, to do the will of God, to trust in the Lord with all of their heart. We're speaking that over the king. King, you trust in the Lord. First you worship and you hear God. Then you trust in the Lord with all of your heart and you lean not to your own understanding. The answer is not in natural understanding. The answer is a spiritual answer for your family to get through this confusion, to know what to do, what to say. It's in the worship. It's in the worship. So I speak not only an individual ability to worship. I say right now that every priest, prophet, and king works worships individually. But I now write in Jesus' name, I speak a corporate worship of men. A corporate worship of kings. Even if it's online, a corporate worship of kings. In Jesus' name, an ability to come together with other kings and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. They won't lean to their own understanding because the spirit of God will take over. Yes, God. Yes, God. Mm. Because if God's people, which are called by his name, would humble themselves and pray, the humility of worship would give us the answer. Not just the answer for coronavirus, but the answer. The answer for your family, King. The answer for your situation, King. The answer for your ministry. The answer for... For, for your finances, the answer for your marriage, the answer for your children, the answer. Humble yourself and pray. Seek God's face. Turn from your wicked ways. You'll hear from heaven in worship. God already forget you. You you'll have a desire to be forgiven for your sins and not walk in sinful behavior, if you humble yourself and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. God's ready to heal our land. It's in the king's worship. But help means we got to support them. Help means we got to pray for them. Help means we got to put the shield up to cover them. We got to know how to bring up the shield. We got to stop being so worried and concerned about our own emotions, about our own feelings, about our, I understand that God's going to heal us too. But we got to know how to pray for the king in the name of Jesus. A spirit of worship is coming over the kings in the name of Jesus. A spirit of humility is coming over the kings. And anything that's hindering his ability to, to worship and pray, we bind it in the name of Jesus with the authority we have in Jesus' name. Walk in, a, in, a, in a, a place of worship and humility, King. We speak it over you. We speak a desire to worship. A desire to worship like they never worshiped before. We, we set an atmosphere. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Set an atmosphere in your home. Set an atmosphere. Even if your king is not in your home, you set an atmosphere. He'll be there. He'll be there, even if it's over, over technology, even if it's over the phone. Set an atmosphere for worship. Set an atmosphere of worship. Mm. Set an atmosphere of worship. You worship. You set an atmosphere of worship. You're an atmosphere setter, help me. Set an atmosphere that, that's conducive to worship. So the king can get the answer. So the king can humble himself. 
when we lend ourselves to what God wants, he'll tell us. He'll tell us. Thank you for tapping in with me. Thank you for tapping in with me. Set an atmosphere of worship. Mm. Mm -mm. Kings, you will worship. And we're setting an atmosphere for you to worship. Confusion, we bind you in the name of Jesus. A spirit of confusion, a spirit of quarreling, and a spirit of discord will hinder the ability to worship in your home. So in the name of Jesus, we crush every assignment of division, confusion, and, and quarreling spirits that have been set so the king doesn't worship. You got to use wisdom, help me. You got to use wisdom, help me. In Jesus' name, get the atmosphere right. Get the atmosphere right so he worships. Get the atmosphere right so he can humble himself before God. In the name of Jesus, use wisdom, help me. Sometimes the enemy, most of the time, the enemy is using us against our king. We cannot be used against our king. God, forgive us when we've been used against our kings in the name of Jesus. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over every household represented, over every doorpost in the name of Jesus. Nothing is coming to our households. I thank you, Lord God, that no plague comes not our dwelling places in the name of Jesus. Our dwelling places are covered under the blood of Jesus and no weapon formed against them will be able to prosper. They are blessed coming in. We're blessed going out. Our, the angels of God are protecting us from hurt, harm, or Danger. We've dispatched the angels to come over every king. We've dispatched warring angels to stand guard over our households. And we say no backlash or retaliation will come not our dwelling. No backlash or retaliation will come near us in the name of Jesus. Concerning this prayer or any prayer we pray in the name of Jesus. We're standing firm in Jesus' name. We're standing firm in Jesus' name. Knowing knowing there's a there's a there's a voice that's crying out before God cry out before the Lord King cry out before the Lord King cry out before the Lord King like you've never cried out before worship God like you've never worshiped before cry out and get the answer Humble yourself and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. There's a spirit that will come over the king that will worship, the king that will bow down, the king that will sing unto the Lord. It's in the new song. Corporate worship. I hear corporate worship of the kings. I speak it all over the world. I speak it in the in the uh, uh, houses uh, of worship in Jesus' name. I see it over internet in the name of Jesus, pure, unadulterated, unhindered worship of kings in the name of Jesus. I speak it happening all over the world. I speak a connection. It doesn't even have to be in person, just an ability to worship, an ability to come together, an ability to bow down before the Lord collectively. I speak that. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Hmm. A desire to worship. A desire to worship the Lord. Speak it. Speak it. Pray it until you see it. And when you see it, protect it. Encourage the worship. Don't be a hindrance to the worship. That's how we protect it. Cover the worship. Declare it until it happens. Don't be skeptical. Unbelief hinders your prayer. In the name of Jesus. If you start to think, oh, this won't happen. Oh, that won't happen. Oh, my king will never do that. That's the reason. That's the problem. Let that go. Let that go. Let that go. Unbelief is not what we need. We need belief. In Jesus' name. Yes. Touching and agreeing. Yes. 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 God, I thank you to, for making it happen. Thank you. For opening the doors for it to happen in Jesus' name. 
And Jesus said of this, she had fervent passion and desire to worship. Yes, I love that. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your answers. Thank you, God, for insight and wisdom and knowledge in Jesus' name. Help me. I need you to speak it. I need you to let, let people know. I need you to let other help meets know. Let's pray until they worship. Let's pray until they humble themselves. Let's pray for the kings to worship. Let's pray for the kings to bow down. Let's pray for the kings to be humble. The answer is in the humility, and worship can bring them to that place. Worship will bring them to that place. Even in the midst of, of, of quarantines and separating and not being together, that the technology allows us to do it. So we've got to speak it, help me, until the kings feel it, see it, desire it, have a passion for it, to worship together in spirit and in truth. The, the answer is in the worship. The answer for their marriage, their family, their destiny, their purpose, the, the, the answers. It's in their humility. The worship will get them there. Mm, my God, help me get out of your own way. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you and I praise you for answers. I thank you and I praise you for insight. I thank you and I praise you for your presence, oh God. We don't take it lightly that you visited us. Mm, we don't take it lightly that you've given us some, some revelation and insight. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Well, thank you, help me. <clears throat> I, I don't know if you can feel what was what was tapped into. <sighs> but the sight of a help me <clears throat> covering the king in prayer while the king bows down before the Lord and the help me putting up a shield, I'm telling you, I could see it. I could see it like it was happening. So in the spirit realm, we've got to do that. Use your sword and your shield to cover them and call those things which be not as though they were. Be ready to do it even if they haven't bowed down yet, if they haven't worshiped yet, if they haven't done it. Be ready to do it. Stand in the gap. Walk in faith. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Walk in faith. Walk in faith that it happens. Trust me. When a man, a king of God, is worshiping in, in pure truth, the sins the choices, the decisions that hinder him from being all God has called for him to be gets eliminated. Gets eliminated. It's eliminated in pure truth. And it's eliminated in pure worship. It gives them strength to do what God wants them to do. So speak of worship. Be an example of worship. Oh my God. Hold your shield up so they can worship. So they can bow down, so they can kneel, so they can they can they can hear. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, help me for coming together with me. I know this prayer was a little longer than we usually pray. I thank God for, for him uh, uh revealing to us, allowing us to come together, allowing us to, to sense his presence. God, we thank you for your presence. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. We thank you, God, for your presence. Oh, Jesus. We thank you, God, for your visions. In the name of Jesus. God, we're praying for, oh, for the kings to worship like they've never worshipped before. To humble themselves and worship. And for the help me to set an atmosphere. Set an atmosphere of worship. Set an atmosphere of worship. Set an atmosphere of worship in Jesus' name. I thank you guys so much, you all, um, for the help meets joining me and for some of the kings that popped on. I thank you all too. I, I pray that it is useful, it is helpful to you to be prayed for by the help meets. I thank you, God, uh, for, for insight and wisdom. Set an atmosphere of worship. Can't, can't say it enough. Set an atmosphere. You shut down anything 
You shut down anything that hinders the ability to worship in your home, including your own emotions or your own words or your own attitude. You shut it down. The answer is in the ability to worship. Let's, let's, let's co-labor with God. Let's co-labor with God so that the atmosphere of worship is exactly what it needs. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for my king's ability to worship. Mm. I thank you, God, for my king's ability to worship. Gerald Benton is a priest, prophet, and king that worships the Lord. I speak it over him. And I thank you that my household is an atmosphere conducive for worship, conducive for peace, conducive for humility. It's conducive. Mm. My God, I thank you. Ooh. Hallelujah. I'm trying. All right, help me. Listen, I need you to listen. Help me. So hear me, hear me, hear me, and hear me well. It's time to make sure there's no hindrances to your ability to worship, to the king's ability to worship. Let's tap in. Let's tap in. Let's not get connected to what's going on in the world, but we need to connect to, to the ability to hear what God is saying to his people and then lean not to your own understanding. We need instructions. We need a word from the Lord. And when we get that word from the Lord, protect the king. Protect the king because the word from the Lord in this season, he, they will have to use a spiritual understanding to follow it because it will not make natural sense. We're, we're entering into a supernatural time, which means it's going to be even more difficult. And that's one of the things we'll continue to pray and study. Well, I appreciate you joining me. I don't want to hold you any longer. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate those who are who are, who are uh, looking for me this morning. Um, go to GeraldineVet.com for resources, information, uh, counseling, mentoring, all kinds of things that God has blessed us to be able to do for the body of Christ, to be able to do for marriages, to be able to do to protect our roles as help meets and priest, prophet, and kings. I appreciate you praying for us. I saw a lot of you put up some, some prayers for us. I, I thank God for you. I thank God for you all praying. I thank God for you all sowing seed, releasing seed in, in, in certain times um, as God leads you to do what God has called for you to do and for certain things to break off of your household. Mm. Oh, that's good. I can't. I, I'm, I'm excited for my mentoring group because they know when we tap in like this, our, our weekly prayer is uh, amazing. So I'm excited. Um, if you want information about being mentored, GeraldineVette.com. I see so many of my mentees on. They know how I am when they, when they push me and we're able to tap into what God is saying. I appreciate them so much. So I, I appreciate my army. I appreciate my SWAT team. I appreciate my, my special ops group, all, all, all the groups God has blessed me with, those who are who uh, cover the ministry and, and have covenant with the ministry. I just uh, appreciate so many of you on. I see my mom on. So I, I thank you all for, for waking up early or watching this on replay and letting others pe other people know we got to get the kings to work. Worship. So encourage the kings to worship, but don't agitate. Don't aggravate them. Don't say you got to do that. Use wisdom. Help me. Use wisdom. Help me. Use wisdom. Help me. Well, thank you so much. Join me tonight. Um, join me. Many evenings I'm doing help me sips. Help me tips and sips. Oh, thank you for going to our YouTube channel. And subscribing, I I got some backup here. Thank you for going to um, for going to Gerald and Yvette Ministries on YouTube and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Getting all the information, the gym workouts, the the prayers, everything is on there. We put it on on the um, YouTube channel. Thank you guys so very much. And I will be on tonight um, unless, you know, God says differently or something comes up. But I'll be on tonight for Help Me Tips and Sips. Get your sparkling juice and join me for a Help Me Tips in the evening. It's usually around 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, a few nights a week I'm on. If you've missed the Help Me Tips and Sips, go to our YouTube channel and catch the replay. Um, get your sparkling juice and join me while preparing um, to be help meets that are suitable. I'm suitable and I want you to be suitable. You're suitable and I need help being suitable. So we're coming together in the, uh, with uh, tips and sips to make sure we stay suitable in Jesus name. We got to be suited up and suitable. Thanks help meets for praying with me. I appreciate you.